Father, we do want to bow in your presence with thanksgiving today. Thank you for your kindness, love, and mercy. And Father, thank you for meeting our needs. Lord, as we have traveled and journeyed through these last months and year, and God, you blessed us and been with us, Lord, and we just want to thank you for your watch care. Thank you for this day that you've honored us with your presence, your guidance, and we're here at the house of God. And we Thank you, Lord, that we can come and worship you and sing and worship and praise you for all that you do for us. So bless our Father, each one that's here this morning, and, and just meet our needs and speak to our heart. And Lord, put the joy of the Lord in our hearts and souls that we might really look up to you and praise you for what you've done for us. Bless the singing. Bless each one. Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Praise the Lord that we can come and worship and sing praises to Him who loved us even when we were unlovable. <laughs> and uh, saved us by His marvelous grace. Tell you that. And, uh, I still look back and marvel <laughs> that I am where I am. And I know it's by the grace of God. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning. Take your Bible, and we're going to turn to the book of 1 John again this morning, and look at this next few verses in this chapter, thinking about it, about what I preached last Sunday morning, and the fact that, uh, my, my, the fellowship that we have with heaven, with our heavenly Father, God the Holy Spirit, and God the Son. And what a time. I don't know if you had as good a time as I did or not, but I had a time last night. It was a blessing. So we're going to continue uh, kind of into this same thing. In chapter, in chapter number 1 of 1 John, verse 5, the Bible says, This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light. Yes. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. Now if we say we that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Hmm. Almost seems like John was trying to let us know, no matter where we might think we are, we're still not where we need to be. <laughs> we still uh, have a problem with this old sin of nature. And things is kind of like that. So as we take a look at, into this portion of the Word of God this morning, uh, I want to title the message. Couldn't think of anything better, so I thought, well, I'd just do it like this. And I, I just want to title the message this morning. Are you walking in the light? If you're not, guess where you're at? <laughs> you're walking in darkness. But uh, I thought about that, and, and I thought about what would I title the message, and, and I know <coughs> Scripture is really, really clear about where we need to be walking. We need to be living where we need to be at, and that's in the light of the Lord. So as we think about this portion of God's Word here uh, in verse number 5 as we've read, John kind of pointed out something in the very first phrase. He said, this then is the message which we have heard of him. And we declare it unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Well, I would to God we could say that about us, but I don't think we can. But we certainly can about him, can't we? God is light. And in him is absolutely no darkness at all. When we come and think about him, uh, I'm going to tell you something. There is nothing that we will ever be able to find as far as any kind of a defect or fault. God is perfect. Amen. In every respect and in everything. And he came. He came to the nation of Israel. He came that he might reveal himself in person. And you know, I know we will not be able to see him in person at this particular moment. Israel never was able to see God in person. Even as he brought them out of captivity and of the land of Egypt, he came and uh, led them out as a pillar of a cloud. In the night, it was a light, and in the day, 
the cloud would lead the nation of Israel with light into the promised land. Uh, I don't like to think about heaven being the promised land, but it's sure going to be a better land than this. <laughs> so we can say it's the promised land too, amen? We're looking forward to that. But I want you to think about the fact that uh, only a few people have really seen God in the flesh. And they saw him in the person of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came and revealed himself like that to them. That he might not only come as God in flesh, but he came to present himself to be their king, their Messiah, their ruler on planet earth. You know, as I know, that Israel rejected him. But I want us to look at something. I want to see what God says about this whole thing. Turn back to John chapter 1. 1 John. 1 John. I, I love the book of John. He's one of my favorites as far as the Gospels. I like them all, but he's my favorite. But I want to show you how God dealt with the nation of Israel. And how we will one day as a church see him as they saw him on his throne. But look here in John chapter number, first, uh, God's, John's gospel, chapter number one, and look in verse number 14. What well, we can see it in verse one, I, wanna, I, I, I don't want to skip that. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In verse 14, it says, and the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. So John reveals right here in his gospel that the Word, that second person of the Trinity, came and was made flesh and dwelt among the people of Israel, walked among them, preached to them, Perform many miracles among them. So they had really no excuse to see that it was God in flesh. But they somehow missed it. And they did not accept him as who he was. The, the, the Messiah, the, the Lord God of heaven. So as we think about these kind of things, and we think about what we're going to be looking at this morning in the scripture, uh, there's some other verses right here in John. You're still in John's gospel. I want you to see something. The Bible says in verse number six that, and God has always used men. He did it all the way through the Old Testament. Uh, Moses bringing the children of Israel out, the, the kings, the prophets, and everybody. He's always used men to point his creation to God. And I want you to see this in verse six. It says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. It wasn't John the apostle, but it was John. And it says, the, the same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. Now I want you to notice that word, because we're going to be looking at the light. Witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light. John wasn't the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which light of every man that cometh into the world. Jesus Christ, God's Son, manifested in a body of flesh, was the, was the light of God in this world. God sent him that they might be able to see the Father in flesh. Jesus Christ was absolutely in perfection and perform miracles that no man could ever, ever do to demonstrate that he was God in flesh. And so as we look at that and we think about those particular thoughts and things, you know, uh, the Bible has a lot to say about light. Now back over to 1 John, uh, as our text says here in the scripture, uh, we're going to be looking at that in here in verse number 5. It says the message uh, which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Amen. And in him is no darkness at all. That's right. He is absolutely 
over and over in the scripture, and I know I can do that and spend a whole lot of time pointing out some things, but you know, we think about how this, what the scripture says, that God is light. What, what does that do for you? What does that mean to you? God is light. We got lights on in the building. And it lights the place up, don't it? It lights things up to make things known. And I've done some thinking and praying about this whole thing. Knowing spiritual truth. What does it do for you? It brings spiritual light into your life. It really does. It lightens up everything. There's, there's things in the Word of God. If you read this book and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, who is the light of the world and the light of your life and the light of Scripture, you'll never really understand it. Just like that back there. God is light. What is God? God is truth. And he's revealing truth through his word. The son of God, the written word. So God is light. When we have light, we can see what's, what's the right way to go. We can see what's in our pathway. If you have light, you're not going to fall. You're not going to stumble over something. You can walk pretty good shape, even out here in the outside. When the sun is shining bright, you have no excuse to stumble around and turn and fall if there's nothing in your way, really. It takes a light revealed to us to understand what's around us. The Word of God is the light that opens up truth in the Word of God. We, we've got to have that truth. Uh, I thought about that. God is light. He lightens up the heart, the mind, and soul of man to understand spiritual things. You'll never understand the spiritual things of God without truth. That's right. Truth. You stop and think about it. It says here in verse number five, it says, uh, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Zero. Well, there's a lot of darkness around us. I mean. If you go out on a real dark night, I remember as a boy raised on Red Hill and me and my dad would go out hunting at night. We didn't have much light back in them days. There wasn't no high powered lights. We had an old kerosene lantern. And uh, dad carried the gun, so I carried the lantern. Amen. And boy, I sure was glad. And you might see that far in front of you. But I had enough light with that lantern to give me some understanding of where I'm putting my foot so that I don't mess up. It gave me the facts or the truth about what was laying in the path. That's right. So light will do that for us. <clears throat> And over and over again, he talks about light. He talks about darkness. As we learn about this whole thing, uh, light will remove darkness. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. You can come in this building right here and it can be pitch black. You can see a thing. The smallest light will remove the darkness far enough that you can see what's around you. <laughs> The truth of someone can come in here and move furniture around and you not know it. You say, well, I know where it's at in my mind. And you start to go over and sit down and it ain't there because you can't see. But flip on the light. Well, my soul is not there anymore. You know what? The light of the Word of God is what gets us into the spiritual realm that we need to live in. That's right. It's the only way we, we can get there. And I, I like the fact how Scripture points this thing out. Uh, I was looking, even in, way back, and this is just a simple thing. I, you don't have to turn there. In the book of Psalms, David, 
He wrote something here, and I just want to read it to you real quickly out of chapter 4 of the book of Psalms. In verse number 6, he said, There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift up, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Who's going to show us any good? Who's going to show us anything? Well, David said, Lord, you lift up. He said, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. You know what? You stay in this book right here, and it'd be like God's lifting up his light of his countenance and making known to you the spiritual things of God, present, past, and future. You, you, a lot of people I can't understand the Bible. You better get to know the author. You get to know the author and it'll start coming alive. That's right. Because you will have the light of God's Spirit with you to unveil what is in the book. So as I, I thought about all that kind of stuff and I'm just thinking about it, you know, and how the, uh, the Bible talks over and over and over about walking in the light. God shining his light or countenance, the countenance of his light upon us. Well, you, you look here, think about all that with me, if you would. Look what it says here in the verse number six. And we'll hang around here a little while. We need a lot more scripture. He says, if we say, if you say, if we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness? What does he say? He said, we lie and we don't do the truth. Hmm. You're going to walk in darkness and have fellowship with him who lives in light? Who lives in truth? We've got to be in the light with him. We've got to have truth in us to have true fellowship with God. That's the reason if a person has never been saved, Never been born in the Spirit of God, you cannot fellowship with God because you don't have the light of the Spirit of God in your heart. That's right. In your life. We try to talk with Him and we can't talk with Him because we don't have that Spirit. And He says, He says in that verse, He says, and if you walk in darkness, you're, you're lying. You, you can't have fellowship with God. It's, it's like the old saying says, you're not on the same page. You're not walking the same path. Listen, people who are in darkness are living blindly and not knowing exactly what they're doing. <clears throat> There's a scripture I'm going to just read real quick over in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter number four, and it's given an illustration here. It talks about uh, a group of people. And I'm, gonna, uh, I'm not going to read a, this whole scenario, but it, it talks about it, verse 12. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And it gives us a list of people. And he said, leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zebulun and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying that the land of Zebulun, of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee, of the Gentiles, the people, now get this verse, the people which sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and in the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Amen. Folks, when Jesus walks in, he is the light. That's right. His preaching, his teaching, his work, it goes on and talks about him walking along the Sea of Galilee and calling the ones that was there to come and follow him. But it says in those areas of the Gentiles, light is sprung up. 
I don't know if you've ever thought of that or not or read that scripture, but I think about us who are not Jews, whether we are native, non-native, <laughs> whoever we are, whatever tribe, amen? You might be here and you may be an Englishman or a German, whatever. Might even be Creek or Choctaw or Chickasaw or mixed like I am. My wife says, you're a big mixture of a bunch, ain't you, son and dad? And I said, I guess so. My, my, my grandfather was Creek on my mama's side and my grandmother. I don't know what she was. She was a head kid or something. My dad was Choctaw. So I'm, I'm a mix between Choctaw, Creek, and Stead Cave. Now I got three different nations in me. <laughs> so I think you don't know who you are, really, unless you can really trace your genealogy close. I'd hate to go any further back than that. They don't tell me where I'd like to. <laughs> 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 I mean, the tree can go a long ways back. But what I'm trying to say is, I thought about that because of the Gentiles, and I know that's what we are. We're Gentiles. We are not Jewish. But the light, the Bible says, and the light sprang up. Well, I'm glad that we got the gospel, that it was brought to these shores, and we got the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because when it comes to our shores, then the light sprung up here on this continent. Thank God for that. But you know, as I thought about all of that, I was thinking about a lot of, a lot of different things, you know, about this light. I think about, I got to think about, probably too much about the light, but I sure think a lot about it. Paul, writing in Colossians in chapter number one, verse number 12, to that church of Gentiles, <laughs> probably mixed too. But he says to them in chapter one and verse 12, giving thanks to the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Oh, the Jews ain't got nothing on us now because we have been brought into the, this same family and become saints in light. We're not Jews, but we're saints. He said, Do that deliver us from the power, notice this next phrase, of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. Thank God for the light. The light is the gospel. The light is truth. The light is to show people who they are, where they are, and where they're headed. That's what the light does. Thank God for the light. But the light is, needs to be realized that it is something more than just a bright light. It's there to keep us from falling. It's to keep us from going the wrong direction. It's to bring us to the center where the light's at so we can know Him who is the creator of heaven and earth and all that is on this earth. We have a God in heaven who loves us. And boy, He's given thanks unto the Father which made us mean or worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and light. Amen. Boy, I'm thankful for that today. today. This life is not going to last forever, folks. We know, we, we come right by the cemetery out here. Every time we come to this church, that don't bother me. But it lets me know that a whole bunch of folks out there was one, one day alive like we are, but now they're there because life came to an end here. But life does not end here. We will live somewhere for an eternity. That's right. We'll either be in heaven or we will be in hell. We will either be with God or separated from God and for an eternity. That's the reason we have the Bible. It's the light message of, of the gospel. Amen. Truth That's to right. bring us to Him. Over and over again. Well, I get into the scripture and I get to thinking about these things. And as we as we look at that at that verse, he tells us, he said, Now listen, if you say you have a fellowship with God, you're still wandering around in the dark. You better check who you are, where you are, and what's going on. Because he said something's wrong. Something ain't right. So look down there now again. I don't know about you, but I want fellowship with God. I want fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I want to talk to God every day. And I want to thank God for the Spirit of God that lives in my heart and life who brought me into salvation through the preaching of the Word of God so that one of these days when I leave here, I'm going to have a better home to go to. 
Yep, heaven is going to be a better place. I'm not going to check out today unless God wants me to come today. If He wants me to, I'm ready to get it. I'm not going to get out here on the highway and act foolish and have a wreck and kill myself. Amen. I'm not going to take a gun and shoot myself. That's foolishness. If I know one day this old body will wear out, this old house will get tired, and I'm, that man inside of me is going to move out. You, you, you do know that there's somebody living inside that's really me. The soul and the spirit of Ernest Best, who lives inside of this old house of flesh, is the real man. And one day, I'm going to discard this old piece of flesh because it's going to be more out. I come through him. And I, and I don't know what bothers you or not. It probably does. When I was a boy and raised up on Red Hill and come to school in Hannah, I think about all that was going on. Three cotton gins in the summertime. I hated them. I had to pick that cotton. Uh, there, there was cafes. Uh, there was a big little cafe right there at the end of town. Was it Pearl's Cafe? Tell me, Nanny. Was that what it was? I'm trying to think. But anyhow, we didn't get to go there because we had no money. But anyhow, <laughs> so, I think about the big old stores like Burkhardt Store, all them buildings, even the little movie house that was down there on the end. That's why I took me. Amen. And for 50 cents, we can go to the movie and have something to drink, you know, a little pop, a little corn, popcorn. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's, that was my first name in days, amen. <laughs> Hopkins service station, all the stuff, barber shop, all the things that. And I come through and I see what's left of that little town. And I think about it. I, don't, I can't drive through it without thinking about it. I saw it. One day, I'll be laying out there at Morrison Cemetery. My grandfather uh, started a cemetery. My great grandfather, Morrison, did. And my, my grandfather continued it. <clears throat> then I got my spot picked out. Man, many hands. My so house burns out. I don't want to stand out where people's going to look at it. I want to put it under the ground. Amen. <laughs> God knows everything has an end. And so he said, Listen, if, if you. If you think you have fellowship with the Father and you're walking in darkness, you don't know what you're talking about. That's going to get a lot deeper than that, but I'm not going to do it. You cannot live in sin. A sin is darkness. That's right. Regardless of how small you think it is, sin is darkness. Because if you have the light in you, you wouldn't do it. Light will show you that it's bad. I don't care if it's tough and on. Weed, as they say, or shooting a needle, or hitting a bottle. That's all the bad stuff. And if you have the Spirit of God in you, you know that that's not right. So you'll get rid of it. Because we want fellowship. I want fellowship with it. And then we look on down here in this next verse. He says, uh, <clears throat> But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, I got all these words, lights, I hunger. Highlighted in my Bible. As he is of the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. Now we're walking in the light and fellowship. Amen. I tell you what, I, I love fellowship. I, that's one thing this COVID just about killed me. Couldn't come to church, fellowship with nobody, couldn't talk to you. I mean, I can see you in my mind's eye, but you sure can't talk to someone in your mind's eye if you can't even shake hands with them. So I was glad I at least had the memory I had in my mind. I could see you on your pew. Boy, I'd hope I'd rather see you in person. But he goes on and says that we say that we have fellowship. You know, he said that we're lying. But in verse 7, I love that. He said, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses it from all unto all of our sins. There is so much that I'd like to say real quick and I can't do it quickly. If you take your Bible, turn over to the book of Psalms 119. I want to read a few verses. I want you to see how God uses this word light and how it pertains to something that's very, very good. Psalms 119. And if you'll get on down to 
verse 130, 105. We'll do it first. 105. I want you to see something. It means a lot to me, and I don't, I've never done this before, and I hope it'll mean a lot to you after I get through. In the book of Psalms 119, verse 105, the Bible says this, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, I was trying to reiterate that, kind of say that in the beginning, but here I want to read it to you. This is what the word of God is. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It'll show us where we're going, which way we're walking, and whether we're going on the wrong path, going after the wrong things. He said, and a light to my path. It's a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. I can visualize and think about that boy out on Red Hill, going off down in the Shell Creek bottom and on over to Ward Hutton Prairie. And me and my dad would be out here with our dogs and we'd be hunting that little old light. That's all we had. It was a light unto our feet and a light unto our path. It kept us on the path. It kept us watching for things that might be in our way. The Word of God will keep you from getting into snares and places you shouldn't go if you get the Word of God. That's right. Now I turn on over mine. I have to turn a page to Psalms, uh, that same Psalm, but in verse number 30. The Bible says here in verse number 30, the entrance of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. There's what light does. It reveals and gives you understanding, knowledge, wisdom about what to do and how to do. Where to go and not to go. Things that will please God, not please God. If we just have the word of God, it is a light to us. It, it, it illuminates everything for us and it gives us understanding. He goes on down to verse, that next verse 133. He said, Order my steps in thy word and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Don't let anything of darkness have control of my life, have dominion over me. He said, You order my steps in thy in the word. So then he goes on in verse number 135 and says this. He says, make thy face to shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes over and over again. 140, thy word is, a, is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. You know, you, know, you say somebody, well, I love the word of God. Ah, oh, what's wrong you? You're weird. Some kind of a religious freak. No, I'm not. That's what the Word of God says. David, our psalmist, wrote that down and said, Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. Amen. If you don't love your Bible, if you don't love the Word of God, you've got a problem. You need to get right with the Lord. Folks, this book is the only thing we have in our hand that will guide us through life's journey and keep us on the right path That's right. and keep us in fellowship with God and help us to get to heaven in good condition. Amen. The only one. There's nothing else. You, you, you can be a mathematician. You can be an astrologist. You can be uh, anything you want to be in this world. It will not help you with your relationship with God. You've got to know this book. Mm -hmm. And the book will help you get there. It'll keep you from going astray. It'll keep you from doing things that are Amen. wrong. Look quickly with me now to the book of John's Gospel again. I want to skip back over there. Go to John Gospel chapter number three. I've got to give you all this today because probably next Sunday I'm going to go somewhere else. We want fellowship with God. We want fellowship with one another as Christians. Well, so that's one thing we need to all be on. Members of this church or any other church that preaches the word of God, we just won't be on the same page. That's right. Love of God, love of his word, and, and love of God's people. <laughs> Amen. That's it. They may not care the brand badness. <clears throat> I'd shock you today that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> look here in John chapter number three. 
And I want you to look down there at verse number 19. He said, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth, that's the one you really need to hang on to at verse 21. He that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought of God. Mm -hmm. we, we ought to live a life that throw us under the microscope of the word of God and we're going to turn out good. Why? Because we have desired to come to the truth, the light of the word of God, that his deeds may be made manifest in us, that we're living like God wants us to, that they might, that they are wrong of God. Our, our actions, our life, our love, one for another. I, I know you do. I, I love our country. I love our little community. Amen. I do. I, I was raised up north of here. I really had no property out there. From, from, I was going to build me a house out there. But I had a sweetheart that sure didn't want to live out there among them rattlesnakes. <laughs> and she was really bad when the tribe said, no way. <laughs> we, we've tried. We can't get water out there. We can't build you a house if we can't get water. So I wound up selling that place out there. And, and I was looking for me another place. And got the one where I'm at now. But I want to be home. I want to go back out on the hill. But you got to have water. We didn't have water. My dad drilled and he got no water. So we hauled water from a spring in a barrel, in a wagon. Good life. <laughs> we survived it. But folks, what I, I, I'm just trying to help today and I want us to see, listen, as Christian people, we are honored above anybody on planet Earth with the opportunity and the privilege to fellowship with heaven. Amen. And to rejoice in the grace and love of God and the eternity he has prepared for us. And our fellowship here, if we're going to make sure it's good with him, we've got to make sure we're not walking in any darkness. That we have not allowed sin to come into our life and to take us away from the things of God. We've got to do that. I'll tell you, we live in a world today, I'll tell you what, they'll try your patience, amen? They'll try everything about you. But we cannot let them take us away from us to become bitter, indifferent, aggravated about everything that's going on. No. Hey. I'm on the other end, other end of the run. I'm just about to the race run. And I'm ahead of a lot of people. Not because I want to be. Because they don't want to run. We look into the Word of God and we see so much. Why won't people come? He tells us right here. They won't come in verse 19. Because men love darkness rather than light. And they love it because their deeds is evil. Their lifestyle is evil. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Me and you are no better than anybody else. And we shouldn't go around acting like we are. We are just privileged to know the King. That's right. Amen. We're just privileged to know His Son. And because we know Jesus Christ, we're on our way to heaven. What is the mission of the church? To be pious? Try to be better than everybody? No. We're to go out and be as kind as we can to everybody we talk to to see if we can help them come to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. That's right. That's what we're here for. I so God wants us to help people that don't know truth. They've never seen the light of the glorious gospel that can deliver them from a life of agony and pain and suffering and things that is just not conducive for humanity. They, they can't see it. But the light of the gospel can shine upon them and they can see and will through the person of the Holy Spirit. We'll bring it to them.
Look here, look here in John's Gospel. I'm going to read another verse or two for you. In, in chapter number eight. Chapter number eight. The Bible tells us over here in, in John chapter number eight, verse number twelve. <clears throat> Can you get over it now? 8 12. Would you look at just what it says? Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Amen. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Mm. Never a reason for those of us who follow him. To walk in darkness because we have the light of life. He said, I'm the light of the world. I am the truth about life, death, eternity, forever. It's all about, I know about it all. And I want you to know that. He says also in chapter number nine of, of that book. I want to read this for you too in verse number 9, verse 5. Jesus is still talking here. Verse 4, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. He said, The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Mm -hmm. He was the light that came down from heaven. He came that man might have light and have light. And so God is, John, as he's writing this letter to the church, here in 1 John, he's letting them know. To know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior is to know the light of the world. And you can have that light in you. And you will have that understanding of all the spiritual as you grow in grace and knowledge of him, that you can walk with him and you can rejoice in him. He lets us know because it's the blood of Christ that can cleanse us from our sins in verse 7. All sins. He said, if you say that you have no sin, you, uh, there's no, he said, that if you say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let me tell you something. John was writing to that church. to Christians. If there's anything we need to guard against, it's sin. Mm -hmm. What is sin? Things that's wrong. Things that is not right with God. I don't want to give you no risk. I had to make one and it be alone. <laughs> but he said, listen, if we sin, I want you to know something. Whether you're saved or lost, if a man will confess their sins and ask the Lord to forgive them their sins, the Bible tells us right here that he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. I remember the night. On December the 11th of 1966, Walk down an aisle in the church. Just like this one, a small church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I went to the altar. And there I asked God to forgive me of my sins. He done it just like that. Amen. I changed my life. I've never been the same. Never been the same. You know what? He not only did that for me, he done that for my daughter. Sitting here with me this morning. He done it for my other daughter that's Made him stumble this morning. Done it for my son. I mean, he's done it for all of us. God is good. And I praise him every day of my life. And so I want you to see today and think about our fellowship. If we have fellowship as a Christian, we don't need to try it with darkness in our life. Because we're going to hinder that fellowship. But if we're walking the light and see the light, we can have fellowship with him. Amen. God is so great. God is so good. I'll tell you what. I, I get to read and study and check and look. 
Criticize you, we're going to praise God with you because you can get back in fellowship with the Lord. And first thing, when we need fellowship, we need it to our Savior. Amen. Anybody agree with me? Well, ain't nobody even wiggling nothing. Smile if you, you don't have to say amen, just smile. Don't you agree? We need to be in fellowship with God. Yeah. He's our Savior, He's our Lord, He's our soon coming King, and we need to walk with Him. So, God, bless you and speak to your heart. Father, we just want to bow in your presence one more time in this side of eternity. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to gather together in your house, look into your word, be reminded, Heavenly Father, of how, how loving, how gracious, how merciful you've been to your creation all the way back. Well, we just ask you to speak to our hearts today. If there's anyone here that needs to be saved, speak to them today. They need to come out of darkness to the light, help them to come. If any of our members, anybody, has sin in their life, they don't have to tell nobody what it is. All they gotta do is ask you to forgive them. Father, we love you today. Thank you for loving us. You bless now the invitation time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay.